with everyone in the world with their own view. Ever wonder if God has a view? And, and that's what the show's all about. What's God's view versus our view? Topics that affect our daily life. Empowering and inspiring. Right. To develop a heart, a kingdom mindset, you know. It's like, because God does have a view. Your host, Dr. Trudy Simmons, The Christian View. View. What a great audience we have today. Thank you at home for watching and inviting us into your home. This is The Christian View. We take today's hot topics and we weigh them against God's Word because God does have a Word and He has a Word for you. Um, I want to welcome my, my co-host with me today. Thank you, Trudy Davy Davis, Pastor Lee Adams, Amy Sutherland, and Coach Caitlin. Hi. Check out their websites. They're doing amazing things for the Kingdom in addition to being part of The Christian View. Well, I have something, some good news. My 15-year-old uh, son just got his learner's permit, Ooh. and I am so excited for Jonathan, so um, look out world, here he comes. Um, but, but anyway, today's hot topic is titled, Will the Real Christian Please Stand Up? And this topic has been on my heart for a while. Mm -hmm. You know, as the world gets crazier and crazier, our faith needs to get stronger yes. and more rooted every day. And I, I feel like a lot of us, well, my pastor said it really good. He said, he goes, God has taken away the fence. Mm -hmm. And we either need to be hot or cold, but if we're lukewarm, he, he's going to spit us out. And it says that in Revelations 3.14. He says, because you are lukewarm, I will spit you out. Mm -hmm. And then in Matthew 7, 21 through 23, it says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into my kingdom. Yes. And that, to me, is such a warning. And, mm -hmm. and I want to say it's scary. It's not scary for me as a believer, but it's scary mm -hmm. for the world. And yeah. we, I just want the world to know, you know, you can't be, you can't be lukewarm. You have mm -hmm. to be hot mm -hmm. or cold or, you know, the Lord is going to spit you out. And that is so important in today's society. You know, I think we need to examine our hearts on a daily basis. You know, are we going to church mm -hmm. just to check off a box? Right. Are we right. going to church for a relationship with Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. And there's a big difference, Trudy, I think. And so let's just talk about this. Are we deceiving ourselves or is Satan deceiving us into thinking that we are who we're not? Yeah. Well, so... I think, like you said, as Christians, we if we are believers, we should know that we are saved. Right. But I think what we hear a lot in the world is what I call counter-Christian mm -hmm. verbiage, which falls right under the, the verse where it says that it's not sound doctrine. Right. But you hear a lot of, well, I'm spiritual. Mm -hmm. I hear that a lot. I'm a good person. Right. If God's a loving God, then He wouldn't send anyone to hell. Mm -hmm. Or, Trudy, I heard this a lot when we were doing the street ministry with the prostitutes. My grandmother prays for me right. every day. Right. So Sort of like yes. by osmosis. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think the biggest way we are being deceived is that today you do not hear pastors preaching on hell anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. Growing up Southern Baptist, it, a Sunday did not go by that the preacher did not put the fear of God in you, mm -hmm. that there were only two options. Right. It was heaven or hell, yeah. and he was usually screaming it in a very yes. convincing way. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so right, yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. Hell falling room six. Yes. I mean, it was, it, was, it was preached to us. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And you know, it's not that sense of urgency to save souls in anyway. right and I think people are because of globalization mm -hmm. and the, the global movement where every religion is given like a voice that it's a means to salvation and we as Christians aren't speaking out against it right. because we're offensive and we're unenlightened mm -hmm. if we think otherwise so I just feel really strongly that that's the biggest ways we're being deceived. Mm -hmm. Right, and I think yes. sometimes we're afraid to mm -hmm. minister. Right. We're afraid yes. to go out and evangelize, right? We're afraid, right. okay, are we going to say the right thing? Are we going to know the right yes. thing? Or, you know, are we going to get attacked, right? Right. And so we've kind of dumbed down our faith. Yeah, yes. Yeah, and we're afraid to offend people. Mm -hmm. Like Trudy was saying, we're afraid to offend people and tell them the truth that Jesus is the way, right. the truth, and the life. And I feel like, too, that we have become a society that, like you said, we've become comfortable. There are so many ways to heaven, right. mm -hmm. and I'm a good person. Mm -hmm. And I think that we are ingrained from young. If you do good in class, right. this is your reward. If you do good, and we think that if we act good enough, we're going to get into heaven. Right. Mm -hmm. But Jesus has to be in our heart. Right. And one yeah. thing you said is, your grandmother can't get you into heaven. No, your grandmother right. cannot get you into heaven. You have to have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Well, even to, you know, I grew up kind of a PK, you know, mm -hmm. pastor's mm -hmm. kid, missionary kid. Yeah. And, you know, it, it doesn't matter what your parents did, right. your grandmother, right. you know, there's no vetting in the yeah, kingdom of God. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you have to have your own personal relationship. Mm -hmm. And just like you were saying, Caitlin, yeah. Jesus is the door. Mm -hmm. We can't have this mixture. And right. this is right. what we have. The great 
great deception mm -hmm. between the Christians and what we have right now mm -hmm. is that there's a lot of mixture. Right. Yeah. And yeah. there it's the word is pure. He is the door. It, yeah. It's not, you know, and this is offensive to some, but it's not through Buddha right. and right. Jesus. No, Jesus mm -hmm. is the door. It's yes. not through right. Muhammad right. and Jesus. Jesus is the right. door. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is the only way. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, like you said, I, I can be a good person or I know the scripture. I study scripture. Mm -hmm. yes. But where's your heart? Even Satan knew yes. Satan mm -hmm. knew scripture. So it, it's, yeah. it's such a heart right. issue between you and Father right. God. Mm -hmm. And I think we're missing that. We're and missing it, tr not being real enough. Yeah. And I think we have to go back to when you were first began talking about, you know, Trudy was saying about in the church, it goes back to the church, you know, the foundation mm -hmm. yes. where the word is being delivered. And most of our mainstream churches now are preaching this doctrine that all you have to do is believe, right. you know. But um, Matthew 7, 20 through 25 teaches us that no, not believing is not enough. He that does the will of my Father, mm -hmm. that's the one. So in doing the will, it means you have have to obey, right. obeying what God says. I can yeah. believe all day. It teaches us that even the demons believe right, right, and yeah. they do tremble, but belief is not enough. You have to so obey okay. God and put it into practice. And that's the only way we're really going to begin to stand up and stand in the truth right. of who we are. And we have to not be afraid to be different. That's right. And that goes to my yes. point, Romans 12 two. do not be conformed to yes. this world, right. but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove what is the will of God. Yes. As believers, we shouldn't look like the world. World. We, yeah. we should be in the world, but not of the oh, world. And I think so often as Christians, we're afraid to stand out. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. and, and not respond like the world and, you know, get into the mud of everything that's right. going on yes. right now. But the flip side of that coin is being brave enough to say, Jesus is the way, right. the truth, yes. and the life. Yes. The only way to the Father is through Him. It's through Jesus right. Christ. Yeah. Stay with us. We'll be right back with a great interview with Pastor Don Allen. You don't want to miss this. We'll see you in just a minute. All right, welcome back to The Christian View. We're talking today about will the real Christians please stand up? And I have with me Pastor Don Allen. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, it's an honor to be back. I think it's been about a year. I feel like I made some great friends and heard some wonderful reports from your broadcast. Well, great. Thank you so much. So you're the pastor of Warhill Church, mm -hmm. and you just opened your... Sixth campus. Sixth campus. So we have War the church at Warhill, which is south and east and west mm -hmm. and, and central. And then we thought, well, we can't be the most south or south by southwest. And so now we have Discover Life churches as well. Wow, so. that, is, that is amazing. And you also preach at the North Georgia Revivals. And they've been going on for... We've been going on for three years. Have the honor to be a part of the pastor of that. We govern that, watch that uh, very carefully to see that everything is honoring God. We've right. had... Uh, 15,000 one-time uh, baptisms, about 18,000. Some people, you know, they just come back for a little more. That's amazing. So. And if you haven't been to the North Georgia Revival, I would encourage you to go. It's, it's phenomenal. Really, it is. And speaking of that, you did a sermon a couple of weeks, probably back in August, on vaccination. It was one of the most powerful sermons I've heard in a long time. I listened to it four times um, on my runs. It was just going out on my jogs listening to it. It was just, it was amazing. And one thing you said is we need to know the difference between an experience with Jesus and a relationship with Jesus. Let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, you know, a lot of that comes from several years ago. I packed up my entire office, was was quitting. I resigned mm -hmm. everything. And uh, then the Lord started speaking to me. And I was like, Lord, I just don't understand. I'm tired of this. And he said, the problem is you're preaching discipleship mm -hmm. and not the gospel. Right. And he said, I told you to preach the gospel mm -hmm. and make disciples. And I realized that most churches have turned in a, to an attempt to try to fix mm -hmm. Uh, saints. Right. That the, we're supposed to edify the body and build them up, but that's done in life. Mm -hmm. When we preach, we preach the gospel. So I've been determined ever since then. We see about a thousand people saved a year in our sanctuary right. at Central, and then the others, of course. So we. One of the questions is, well, you know, in the South. You were either part of a church that teaches uh, that childhood experience, um, and uh, or we always say, you, well, I'll just put it this way: you were you the Baptist or once was here right. in the South, you yep. know, and mm -hmm. that's just the way it, it, it is. But what we realize is that most people have had an experience. They went to an altar, they cried a tear, but they had no life change. Right. 
And to really, really know Jesus, uh, you know, Billy Graham said it this way. He said that the greatest uh, mission field in America sits in the church pews. Which is so unbelievable to me. Yeah, yeah, it really is. And, but see, because they think, well, I had that experience, and then they were taught something that wasn't biblical. Right. They were taught because they had that experience. Mm -hmm. But they're, they're also forgetting other scriptures. And I just share one with you. 2 Corinthians 13, 5 says, examine yourselves yourself. Don't mm -hmm. look, who cares what other people are saying about you? You know the truth right. about yourself to see whether or not you're in the faith. Mm -hmm. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, and this is hard, you fail the test. Right. And I think a lot of times mm -hmm. when we've had that experience, we went to an altar because every our cousins went or, you know, that, that, that actually, and you know, you've heard me preach. I'm rather mm -hmm. vocal about how I feel. It upsets me that people think you can only get saved in the spring revival. Right, right. Yeah. People can get saved year round, everywhere, every day. In your car. And, and your but, but because of the spring revival, it was the atmosphere, and you know everybody, your cousins crying, so you go down, and you know I'll never forget I was in a, a small country uh, Baptist church up in the mountains, and I was preaching, and this young man came to the altar to be saved, mm. and the local pastor was was rather upset. He said to me, uh, and to him, he said, "He's I was there when he was saved when he was eight. Right. And the man, I said, well, let's just pray rededication. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, the man came up to me and he said, there was nothing saved about my life before right. tonight because I had an experience yeah. and I didn't pass the test. And I think that is so important that there has to be fruit. There has to, and that leads me to one thing you talked about in this sermon was the wheat and the tare. Yeah. The difference between the wheat and the tare and how they look so much alike. But let's talk about that. That's from Matthew 6, I mean, Matthew 13, 24 through 30. Yeah, when you, you know, when you go along, I'll never forget the sermon my dad did on that as a child. He brought them in and put them side by side. And when you really know what a weed and a tear, a lot of people think weeds, but that's not really, it's, that's not a weed. It's, right. it's a, it actually looks exactly like wheat. Mm -hmm. Do you know the only difference between the, the weed and the tear? I do. You do? Because you listen to the I message. I did, yeah. I did. Four uh, times. Let's tell uh, the audience. Uh, the only thing is the fruit that's inside. Yeah. The only difference at all is the fruit that's inside. And so when we realize that they were planted together in the same field, mm -hmm. and a lot of people feel like, you know, well, I'm going to church and I'm doing this, but going to church doesn't get you to heaven. That's right. You know, I actually sat with one of the, the, the most influential uh, uh, people uh, in the real estate world, and, and as, they, as they were about to pass, I said to them, what are you going to say when you get to heaven? And they said this. They said, well, I'm going to tell them I know Don Allen. Right. And I said, well, that's not going to do you any good because I can't get myself in the door. That's right. Only Jesus can get That's you in right. the door if you have the fruit of repentance in your mm -hmm. life. I think repentance is really, really good. Yeah. We have to be able to repent. And we, we do need to examine our hearts and know what our motives are in test and see if, if they're the right motives. And so should we question our faith or our salvation? Well, people say never question your faith or salvation, but I think that goes contrary to test yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to not live in fear and live in doubt. But at the same time, we have to begin to realize that we, if our life is not measuring up. And so when I deal with sin uh, at the end of the service, I'm not like going, maybe this is you. I'm like, you know if it's you or not. Right. You simply know because the reality is there. And when you know it's there, um, then if you know there's open sin in your life, then maybe you ought to step back. Mm -hmm. And people say, to me, well, show somebody in the scripture that got saved and then didn't go to heaven. I said, well, that's the easiest thing on the planet. Acts chapter 8. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that Peter looks at Simon, who the, the scripture says, not me. Simon said, or the scripture says Simon believed, was publicly confessed in baptism, and even went to Bible college with Philip. Right. And then Peter says, you're going to hell and your money's going to burn there with you. Because he did not honor what God had done in him. Right. And I think, you know, we go back to that. We've, we, can't, we should remember when we first became, we came saved, but we have to make sure that there's fruit, you know, to the, to the, to the very end. Yeah, right? that's right. Pastor Don, thank you for joining us today, and um, I hope you'll join us on our last segment with here thank at The you. Christian View. We'll see you in just a few minutes here at The Christian View. Christian View. We're having a great discussion today on will the real Christians please stand up. And we had a great interview with Pastor Don Allen from Church at War Hill. So thanks for staying with us. Um, you know, God's coming back. He's coming back for his bride. And we need to be ready. We cannot be lukewarm anymore. As I said in the first segment, God's taken away the fence and we have to choose sides. So Lee, how are we doing at church? How are we as the body of Christ doing with 
heaven and hell? Well, I think right now um, the body of Christ is not doing as well as it should be. Mm -hmm. um, and I was going to say first that I think, you know, we need to, um, you know, get our voice going. But I think first we've got to refine it. We've got to get back together, right. connected in um, unity and remember our purpose that, you know, the church is just not a place, a collection of human beings coming together um, and being a part of an organization, but we are bound together for the mission and purpose of the gospel of Jesus right. Christ and unifying people toward that common goal. And I think when we get back to that and um, remember we're the salt of the earth and the light of the world. And as we said earlier, you know, not be so worried about offending right. because when I was younger, you know, that's what the word did. It, we, we called it convicting. Right. You know, the word convicted mm -hmm. us and it propelled us to do better. So I think if we if we're going to change the status quo, we got to stop worrying about pleasing people. Right. And I'm just preaching the word, you know, because one day we could lose our religious freedom. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we've got to become bold, hot, on fire Christians yes. for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And yeah. a lot of people are really comfortable in their faith. I feel like in America, as long as you go to church, you're really comfortable. Mm -hmm. And so what we're going to really have to do is really separate, you know, this, you're either strong in your faith or you don't. And we have to really, church has to become more of a place to equip people mm -hmm. to know how to operate. Right as Christians in persecution. Mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily that it may be persecution, but we need to know how to defend our faith right? Yes. and to operate in it boldly. Yeah. And to exactly. piggyback on what Caitlin was saying, I, I had written down, like we need to stop singing to the choir. I feel like we, because the world is so hostile against what we believe, mm -hmm. it just seems a lot more comfortable to stay inside our little holy huddle and talk about the way it should be, right. could be, used to be, mm -hmm. but we don't really go out there and challenge the things that are happening in the world and it's scary and I'm not saying I have the answers and I'm not saying that it it isn't a challenge but we have got to do what Lee yes. said and find that creative way mm -hmm. to be more vocal about what we know because we have the answer yes. right you know how they say mm -hmm. like if you had the cure for cancer do you yes. keep it to yourself right. but that's kind of what we're doing because we're afraid of the people that need the cure right we have the same mm -hmm. Holy Spirit living mm -hmm. inside of us but Pastor Don you did that sermon called vaccination it was so powerful and you talked about tears and I just want to touch on this real quick mm -hmm. you said there's three ways to become a tear and um, one was you think think you're a good person. Let's touch on that for just a minute. You think you're a good person. Well, I think that's the number one answer anybody gives when you say, how do you know when you get to heaven that you're going to get in? They go, well, I'm a good person. You know, God sees all the good things I do. Right. The problem with that is lots of good people are going to go to hell. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. You know, I also want us to be very clear. Jesus very rarely mentioned hell, but he kept reminding people. See, people who try to escape hell really aren't saved. What mm -hmm. Salvation comes when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so by trying to measure up, we'll never measure up with enough mm -hmm. good works. Mm -hmm. I don't care how great a person right. you are. Mm -hmm. And so we have to tear those things down. Uh, that, that mentality of, you know, uh, hey, you know, I help this cause or I do that. And we have to realize that, that you know what, I'm really not a good person. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's just be honest about mm -hmm. it. I mean, I'm sure I'll have a meme of that made somewhere, but, uh, <laughs> uh, and the, but the truth is I'm not. I do deal with things. God showed me my heart, and I asked him never to do that again. Right. Yeah. Well, it says in Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful above all things, yes. beyond repair, who right. can under, beyond cure, who can understand it? Right. Ways man, uh, man's ways always seem right into themselves. Mm -hmm. Scripture mm -hmm. teaches yeah. us. At the end, they're up. You know, and the, yes. the word says that Jesus is coming for a pure and a spotless mm -hmm. bride, that mm -hmm. the bride makes herself ready. Mm -hmm. But in our culture, we're we're taught to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. We're not we're not challenged. Yeah. And particularly like you were saying, even with persecution. And it really comes back to going back to the word, not mm -hmm. to the doctrines of modern day society. Mm -hmm. But what does the word say? He right. said, if yeah. you serve me, you will face persecution. Yes. Right. But right. what are we meant to be doing before his return? Preparing mm -hmm. the way for mm -hmm. his second coming mm -hmm. and preparing ourselves, right. which you said is a heart issue. Right. And as the bride of Christ, and that's the difference between even the wheat and the terrors, I believe, yes. is, the, and this might be controversial, but there's a difference between the body, the church, yes. and the bride. Mm -hmm. right? Jesus says, behold, in Revelation 3, I stand at the door and knock, mm -hmm. and he is coming for a bride who has made herself mm -hmm. ready. Right. Yeah. And I think, back to your point, we don't want to see our heart, no. right? We don't want to yeah. know, because it, it is, you know, we have become a very self, all about me mm -hmm. society. And do we really want to know what's in our heart? And, and that's, the truth is, uh, most of us want to believe what God's Word says, but if we really mm -hmm. saw the truth, 
we wouldn't be living by it. Right. right. That was yeah. kind of mm -hmm. the second way we know whether or not we are weed or mm -hmm. tear. Do we actually live by the word? Because yes. you mentioned that even the demons right. will, right. Mm -hmm. will believe, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. and which takes us to that last part. The problem is most of us have been successfully vaccinated against heaven right. wow. because we trusted good people. Yes. They right. come up and go, no, I was there and I remember. Yes. And you know yeah. you've been living like the devil. Yes. Right. Right. I'm not you, but you yes. know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, uh, you know, people know they're not living right. right. And mm -hmm. then all of a sudden, they, somebody goes, no, I was mm -hmm. there. And, you know, I remember sitting in a, a, a funeral hearing them describe someone and knowing that they were feared by everyone in the room, but the pastor was talking about wow. 30, 40, 50 years ago, there has to be fruit yes. and the fruit of right. holiness. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and it, yeah. it really makes me think of Matthew 7, 21 through 23, where it talks about how you cast out demons in my name. I did all this in your name, but depart from me, I never mm -hmm. knew you. And right. I feel mm -hmm. as if we are a culture that knows a lot about God, but we don't know God. And you right. have to have, like you said, fruit. It's An intimate relationship. Yes. yes. Intimate we, relationships. We, surrendering, mm -hmm. all, surrendering all so that He can be Lord of our yes. lives so we can be His hands and feet. Yes. Well, we teach people, you know, and I think, you know, a lot of it is in church. We want to now make the common goal about making sure people understand that God loves them. Mm -hmm. And yes, we do have to tell. He does love yes. all of us for God so loved. Mm -hmm. But in the end, he says, if you love me, right. you'll keep my commandments. Right, so right. it's mm -hmm. a reciprocal thing. So it works w both ways. So if we're going to change, we know we don't need to stop telling people God love them. But we need to remind them, if you love him, then mm -hmm. you'll do what he right. said. That's yeah. right. And our hearts need to be ablaze with passionate right. love for him. Mm -hmm. You know, I believe that the Lord in this next move, he's going to come and we're going to long for him. Yes. We're, we're, there's such a desire coming to really know him, mm -hmm. you know, as that um, bridegroom and bride right. longing for her groom to come. It, we're going to come into days of Song of Solomon where we were passionately fear mm -hmm. and love the Lord. Yes. But the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yes. And that's what we've lost. We've lost our boldness right. as a church because we became unfastened from his heart. Right. But he, once we refasten to his heart and lock in, that's when we're really going to see right. The church yeah. stand up. We become complacent. Yep. We, become, yeah. we become our own worst enemies mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with standing up for the Jesus. And we did a whole se segment on that about a year ago on yeah. our, we, we became our own censorship as Christians because yes. we stopped speaking up. We stopped being bold. We stopped. Yeah. We kind of we kind of put out the holy fire within us and we need to bring that holy fire back. Mm -hmm. Stay with us. We'll be right back with more here at The Christian View. View. We've had a great discussion today on will the real Christian please stand up. And like I said earlier, God has taken away that fence. You need to choose which side, either hot or cold for Jesus Christ. He is longing for that relationship with you. And I pray that you will ask him to come into your heart as your Lord and Savior. Thank you, Pastor Don, for joining us today. We'll see you next time on The Christian View.